think that's on the next slide, in fact. Nope. Oh, sorry, this is just to mention that there's been some recent work, actually just published a couple weeks ago, uh, seeing, this, uh, seeing this effect in, um, in silicon uh, structures. Uh, they found a much lower um, generated power than their theory, than their theory predicted. Um, there are a number of possible experimental reasons for that, but I think one theoretical reason is I think they left out this alpha squared. Okay, so I think that's, that's part of the reason of their discrepancy. But the paper's only two weeks um, old, and I only saw it yesterday, so I'm not 100% sure that statement's right. Okay. okay, let's compare the two cases, okay? L over V here is about 100 optical periods. Okay, for these typical ring sizes. Okay. So we got 100 optical periods here. And alpha squared is about, let's say, 100 or 200. Okay. So that means that, we, that that kills us by a factor of alpha fourth. But we've still got an alpha fourth left over here if we compare the ring structure to the channel structure. Okay. So we get an enhancement in the effective length of alpha squared, which can be 100 or 200. So if we, if we talk about a typical ring, uh, which will maybe have a radius of, oh, I don't know, 30 microns, something like that, okay? Then that, compare, that would compare favorably with a channel with a length of maybe three millimeters. And of course, one can put a bunch of these rings in a row, one can cobble them together in different ways, and one can do other interesting nonlinear optics with them as well. I also want to mention that when I talked about the light coming out of the channel here, that was at all frequencies, all frequencies, and there was a lot of frequencies coming out. The numbers I just gave you for the ring were at two of these neighboring resonances, but there are more. There's a couple more over here, there's a couple more over here. And you will get light out of a whole bunch of these until, of course, eventually the phase matching begins to kill you. So, in fact, if you look at the total number of spontaneously emitted photons coming out of the ring, it's going to be larger than the channel, even by a factor larger than the one I just indicated. Okay. Of course, whether you could use all of that in a, in a profitable way or not is another story, but we're just starting at the moment to try to understand the physics and the scaling of these things. I also want to mention that the nature of the spontaneously emitted photons that come out is different. These two, the, the two photons that one gets, let's go back to the channel case now, and here I've now just drawn the bare process where I have two pump photons converting to a signal and an idler photon. These photons are entangled, typically. What that means is that if you, if you, you can construct a wave function for them, but the wave, since there's two photons, you, uh, you have to have the, the, the wave function has to depend on two variables. Let's say the frequency of one and the frequency of the other one. Okay? So you have a wave function, and this is the probability squared of the wave function. Uh, as a function of omega one and omega two, it looks something like this. That is, it's sort of large in the middle, and then it gets small down here. Okay? And the, this range over here is set by the phase matching condition in the channel, and the width here is set by the pump bandwidth. Okay, that is, how well defined is the frequency of my pump coming in at omega p. Now, in this kind of structure, if you detect one photon at some frequency, somewhere along here, okay, the other photon is going to come out at some frequency along here. But it turns out, and this is not immediately obvious until you make the calculation, and I can't illustrate it for, for you for in a, with a simple way in the diagram, but it, when this, it, with this kind of a structure, if you detect one of the photons, what you get is a kind of mixed state where your second photon might be at this frequency, centered at this frequency, or it might be centered here, or it might be centered here, or it might be centered there. It's what quantum mechanically is called a mixed state. It corresponds to classical uncertainty in the center frequency of that other photon. Now, for some applications in quantum optics, that's not desirable. 
you would like to have, you would like to detect one photon, which would act as the herald that will tell you another photon is coming, but you would like to know precisely what that other photon is. And in this case, you cannot do that. All right. Now, if we go to a ring structure, well, oh, I got these strong resonances now at omega i and omega s. So that's going to bracket this. And in fact, my biphoton wave function is going to look more like that. Okay? And again, although I can't prove it for you, I'll just tell you that the result is that if you get a biphoton wave, wave packet that looks like that in the kind of calculation I just sketched, you actually get two unentangled photons. Each photon is almost the same as the other one. Which means that if you detect one, you know what the other one is. And for many applications in quantum information processing, that's, that's, uh, that's a useful regime to be in. Okay, so let me just summarize. I, I hope I've argued that third order optical processes can be significantly enhanced in micro ring structures. It's also true for second order nonlinear optical processes. Um, spontaneous four way mixing, which is, the, which is the process that I talked about and also what you might call slightly seeded parametric processes, that is when you put in a little bit of a seed at another frequency, should produce output states with interesting photon statistics. Again, I haven't demonstrated that. I've sort of, I hope I've given you sort of plausibility arguments that maybe you could accept that and maybe you might be interested enough to read our papers and look at the calculation and convince yourself that it's true, okay? The most important thing, I think, is that there's a large parameter space uh, for the design of micro ring resonators and other cavity structures. I indicated that there are, an, are analogous systems that will behave in the same way as these, as these micro ring structures. I think those, a lot of those deserve to be looked at. Uh, a lot of these structures should lead to a wide range of entangled states and other kind of interesting states with quantum statistics that I, I think are well worth exploring. Some of them might even be useful. Now, the, the, the title that I started with was Not All Light That Wanders Is Lost. Um, it comes from Lord of the Rings. Uh, it's uh, from part of a, a poem uh, that refers to Aragorn. It says, Not All Those Who Wander Are Lost, which is a nice thing for somebody like me pretty far from Toronto to keep in mind. Uh, but here's a, here's a, here's a little uh, uh, cartoon of Bilbo holding the ring. Okay. And the point is uh, that the ring is pretty powerful. And, you know, the ring's pretty important, okay? And you should spend some of your time thinking about the ring and thinking about what the ring might do for you, okay? Uh, and the other thing I want to end with is that um, I, I like to be a good collaborator in research. So if you get any ideas, call me, okay? And also, since I, I, I'd like to be a good collaborator, Ben told me to keep this short. And by God, I've kept it short. Thank you very much for your attention. No, the, the photons come out e essentially, if, if they are identical, they'll, they'll come out. Typically one arranges so that they're identical except one might be this polarization and one might be that polarization. But then you can, with a beam splitter, you can delay one with respect to the other so that when you detect one, you can make a calculation and know where the other one is. That's right. In the same way, I, I, I really think this is an analog of spontaneous emission. Okay? You are going to get spontaneous emission if you put an atom in an excited state. Okay? You can't control exactly when it's going to happen. There's a certain bandwidth associated with that. The bandwidth of the light that comes out can be modified by the environment in which you put the atom. Similarly, the bandwidth of the photons that come out in this spontaneous process can be modified by the structure that you put.